Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixim Perfect, and let me ask you a very simple question. So, what is long exposure photography? Well, in layman's terms, all of those photos that you see of milky waterfalls, traffic in motion, high speed clouds are all long exposure photographs. But how are these long exposure? Well, to take these photographs, you keep the camera sensor exposed for a long time. Therefore, it is called long exposure. In other words, you can also say that you keep the shutter open, the camera shutter open for a long time. Now, is there any other scenario where you keep the camera shutter open for a long time as well? Well, this camera that has been filming me has had its shutter open since the beginning of this video. So, aren't videos long exposure? Well, it's a little complicated to answer, but something to think about. But the real question here is, can we convert videos to long exposure photos? Hell yes, and that's what the video is all about. I have two awesome examples for you, one for the star trail and the other is a beautiful daylight scene. So without any further ado, let's get started. Before we begin, this video is made possible by one of the best deals for photography that happens every year just for 5 days. So the 5 day deal team looks out for some of the best premium photography and photo editing resources throughout the year and clubs them into a bundle and lets you have it for a massive discount. How much is the discount you might ask? Well, it is 96%. It's crazy, isn't it? But it's only for 5 days. The bundle contains photography masterclasses, photo editing courses, magazines, creative assets like Photoshop actions and presets, premium memberships to photography websites, and the list is just endless. Be assured that these online training courses are created by some of the most popular and leading photography experts in the industry, which you are familiar with. There are three bundles to offer, so you can choose which one is best according to your needs. If you want it all, you can always get the complete bundle which offers you the most value along with a ton of bonus content. I'm personally excited about the Ploroverse one year membership included in the main bundle, which is an amazing software that makes your still photos move. Ploroverse uh, in itself costs $99 today. Also, I'm looking forward to doing more portraits in this course by Peter Hurley, who is one of the biggest names for headshots, is a serious game changer. Keep in mind, this course is in itself $300 if you buy it today separately right now and the cost of the bundle in which it is included is less than half of that. Also in the complete bundle you will find 6 editions of Scott Kelby's Photoshop and Lightroom magazines, some of which articles I have personally written. So even if you just want one or two things from the bundle, you are getting at least 50% off. Although there are more than $5,000 worth of content just for $1. 57. And the best part about this deal is 10% of all the profits will go towards charity. You can check out which charities they are giving out to in the website as well. Do check the link in the description to see what is included and check out the best offers. Keep in mind the offer expires in 4 days from the time of publishing this video. That is October 20, 12 pm Pacific time. Back to the video, first let's understand the concept using a simple daylight scene and then we'll move on to example number 2 where we will cover star trails because it has a little more advanced steps. So stay tuned till the end. So here we have a beautiful daylight time lapse. Let's take a look at that. Let's say you want to convert this into a long exposure photograph. What do you need to do? Step number 1 would be converting this video into an image sequence. So all in all we are saying that Take the frames of this video and export them separately as image files. Although there are lots of ways of doing it, I use Premiere Pro. You can also use any online platform. There are lots of platforms where you upload your video and it converts it into JPEG sequence for you. There are lots of free converters available as well. But I use Premiere Pro because I can chop the video, slice the video, select the part I like and then I can export it as a JPEG sequence as well. So let's open up Premiere Pro. And by the way, if you don't have Premiere Pro, don't worry, there are lots of ways to do it. Just keep in mind, convert the video into an image sequence. Just Google, convert video to JPEG or convert video to PNG and it will show up. Once you open Premiere Pro, let's create a new project right here. We can name this whatever we want. Untitled one is fine. I'm guilty of naming my files that way. <laughs> Alright, and you can choose the location of the project file and just hit OK. I'm just keeping it the way it is just to save time. And then let's drag and drop this video in Premiere. In the timeline area, it will automatically create a sequence. Now you need to decide how much of the video you want. I don't want it when it gets dark. 
So I'm just gonna take that area away. So let's take it away. Now we want just this much, 12 seconds. Now keep in mind, if your video is 30 FPS for every second, there will be 30 images. And the more images you have, the more processing time it's gonna take. Yes, you can reduce the number of frames by just speeding up the video to let's say 200%. But that's something I wouldn't recommend for star trails because then you will begin to see gaps between the stars. It won't be smooth. All you gotta do now is to make sure that the timeline area is selected. Then go to File, Export, and Media. Now my desktop is scaled so it looks a little crazy. Don't mind that. In the output name, you can just single click on that and choose the location of your choice. So I'm gonna create a folder called Image Sequence. And inside that folder, I'm going to save it as daylight. Daylight is fine and click on save. Make sure you choose the format as JPEG right there. You can also choose PNG, your choice. And then let's choose JPEG sequence. Click on export and it will save each frame as a JPEG image. Now, as you can see, it has been exported. Now inside this folder, remember we had created one more folder called image sequence. If you open that, take a look at that. All of the frames of that video is inside it. Now, all we got to do is to stack them up as layers in Photoshop. So let's open up Photoshop from right here and simply go to File, Scripts, and Load Files into Stack. Let's click on that. Now, you can select images one by one or you can choose an entire folder. So from the drop down, just choose Folder and click on Browse. And we're going to simply choose the folder Image Sequence and click on OK. Now, as you can see, the photos are loaded up right over here a total of 377 that's a lot a general rule is try not to go beyond 500 unless you have a very powerful computer now while taking the video if the camera shook a little just even a little bit i would recommend you check this box which is attempt to automatically align source images so photoshop will automatically try to align each frame based on its content now keep in mind this is gonna take a while but in this case i don't think the video moved a little so i'm just gonna keep it unchecked and also you can check create smart object after loading layers so what that does is that after it stacks up all the layers it converts and groups them into a smart object if you check that. And it will do it automatically. It's a part of the step. Right now, let's uncheck it. We're gonna do it with the second example. Just hit OK. Now, as you can see, the layers are going to stack up right here, one by one, slowly and gradually, all 377 of them. Was it 377? I'm not sure. Yes, it was. Take a look. All right, let's wait for all of the layers to load. After the photos are loaded as layers, we need to select all of them. So select the first one, hold the shift key and select the bottom most one. Everything in between will be selected in series. Now right click on them and choose convert to smart object. And that's what the checkbox did for you. Remember when we loaded the images into Photoshop, we had a checkbox called create smart objects after loading layers. This is what that checkbox did. So it will save you a step of selecting all the layers and clicking on convert to smart object. Now, once it has been converted into a smart object, then it is very simple. Just go to layer, smart objects, and then choose a stack mode. Just make sure that layer is selected and choose a stack mode. I'm going to go ahead and choose mean. It'll find the mean of all the images. Mean as not in the um, emotion, but yeah, you get the point in mathematics. Just take a look at this. Look at how milky the water is. It's so smooth, right? So let's zoom out. So think of it like this. It creates an average of all of those frames. Now it doesn't mean that you will choose just mean for stacking. You can also choose some other options as well. And for star trails, it might be different. Let's take a look at example number two. So here we have a time lapse of stars. Let's take a look. Wonderful time lapse. And it's also a little longer. Now, depending upon how long you want the star trails to be, you have to just output that. It might be 500 or 600 images. The computer is going to take a little while to do it, but the results are going to be worth it. So let's open that up in Premiere as well. Maybe in the same project, that's fine. So here we are in Premiere. We can just close that sequence in the timeline. Just drag and drop that. It'll create one more sequence. 
It's not like that we are just saving a project or something like that. And by the way, if you want to skip a frame, as I told you before, you can speed up this video and then export it as a JPEG or PNG sequence. But then if you skip frames, especially the trail that is further away from the radius and that moves quickly, there will be little gaps and we don't want that. So therefore, I want to keep this entire video and let's export it by going to File, Export and then media and this time you can choose png it's up to you so i'm gonna go ahead and choose png this is gonna be a png sequence and let's save it again inside of example 2 i'm gonna create a new folder called image sequence and inside that folder we're gonna save it as startrail.png that's fine it's gonna number it accordingly and click on export now, one of the great advantages of using PNG over JPEG is that, first of all, it supports transparency, although in this case, it is not very useful. Secondly, PNG is a lossless compression format, unlike JPEG, which is lossy. So it gives you a better quality. Similarly, it has been exported and we have all the images just for curiosity. Let's look at the size of the entire folder. So if we go to the properties, the size one gigabyte. Oh my gosh. And this video is about 233 MB. See, once you export it as high quality PNG, this is what you get. All right, let's open them up in Photoshop. Hopefully it will open. So let's go to file, scripts, load files into stack. Let's choose folder and then click on browse. We are going to choose the image sequence folder for the star trails and hit OK. Now just make sure while you're doing this, your computer has enough scratch disk space. Otherwise, Photoshop will just crash or show you the error. All right, the images are loaded. Again, to save time, this time, you're gonna just click Create Smart Object after loading layers. That way, it will load all the layers and automatically convert this, group it into a smart object. All right, hit OK, and let Photoshop load it one by one. Let's see how many frames, 479. As you can see, all of these images are opened as layers and also already converted into a smart object. We saved a step by checking that checkbox. All right, with that smart object layer selected this time, it's gonna be a little different because we don't wanna create an average. If we do, the stars won't be that visible. We wanna create the maximum brightness that is available. We want every frame to add light. And for that, we'll choose a different stacking mode. Let's go to layer and smart object. Inside of stack mode, this time we will choose maximum. So while you create these stacks, you can go ahead and try different modes and see what they do. For this one, maximum works the best. Let's take a look at the results. As you can see, the trails are so darn smooth, right? So if you zoom in, you will see no gap between the trails and it's such a wonder to look at. By the way, there's one more way you can do this. So instead of converting all the layers into a smart object, when you have all of them, so you can select all the layers. So with the bottom layer selected, hold the shift key and select the topmost layer and just change the blend mode of all of these to lighten. There you go. Once you change the blend mode of all of these layers to lighten, it creates the same effect. So I also wanted to show you an alternative method. Now, if you want to enhance the colors, you can simply do so by creating a hue saturation adjustment layer or a color lookup adjustment layer, whatever you wish. So click on the adjustment layer icon and let's choose hue saturation. Let's increase the saturation just a little bit to add some color to it. You can also use selective color here some um, color grading techniques here. That's totally up to you. So that's how to convert videos to long exposure photographs using Photoshop. So all you have to keep in mind is first of all, when you have the video, make sure there is not much camera shake. Even if there's little, that doesn't matter. You can align that in Photoshop later. First, we have to convert the video to an image sequence. You can do that with Premiere. You can do that with any software of your choice. You can also do it online. Once you convert it, then you have to open it up in Photoshop and load them as a stack. Once you load them as a stack, convert all of that into a smart object, group it and use a stacking mode. You can choose mean, maximum. Also, I showed you one additional way of creating star trails by using the blend mode, lighten. And after that, you can do some finishing touches with color grading if you wish to. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping me keep Pixim Perfect free for everybody forever. 
Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.